you made it to this video, that means you survived your first semester of nursing school, your fall semester of your junior year. So congratulations on surviving fundamentals, patho, health assessment, and health promotion and nutrition. Now we're moving on to your spring semester of your junior year of nursing school. And this, you're going to be taking three classes. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's nice and easy, three classes. But it's really more like four classes, and I'll break down why. But to give you a quick overview, the courses you'll be taking for the junior spring semester are going to be OB, which is labor and delivery, obstetrics, uh, babies, and peds, OB slash peds. One course, two different subjects material. Then you're going to have your pharmacology and your med search one. So we're going to break down each of those courses in this video. So when I said earlier that OB and pediatrics is kind of like two courses, I kind of meant it. So back in the old curriculum for the College of Nursing that they changed, we were the first class to go through this new design curriculum. It used to be you would do half your semester with OB or pediatrics and the other half would be the opposite. So if you started at the beginning of the semester with OB, you do all that, take the final, be done with it, and then do pediatrics, do all the pediatrics content, take the final. Instead, we now switched it up so you're taking OB and pediatrics simultaneously. So for example, we would have a OB lecture on Monday and it would alternate between being online or in person because we were the corona cohort of Augusta University and then pediatrics lecture would be on Fridays and this is by far one of it keeps you very busy and you're always having to work and the subject material can be challenging a lot of my classmates are passionate about OB and pediatrics and want to work in that field so they enjoyed it I personally found it interesting but have no desire to work in it but that's just me but with OB and pediatrics it'd be back to back to back so for example we might on some Fridays have a OB exam Friday morning and then that following Monday we would have a pediatrics exam so we'd be cramming all day all week really for the OB exam that came up on Friday and then take that and then we'd be cramming for the pediatrics exam that we'd be given on Monday or vice versa so definitely be prepared there's some online modules like EAQs and things that you need to do be sure that you stay on top of that they're kind of ankle biter assignments and then as far as OB and pediatric clinicals go they're two different clinicals so for your pediatric clinicals you're gonna to go to the Children's Hospital of Georgia which is over there and then for OB clinicals you dibble dabble between university hospitals labor and delivery room and Augusta University's labor and delivery room two different clinical instructors two different facilities so if you kinda keep it in your mind that they're two different classes it's a lot easier to manage and navigate but this is going to be your most challenging class this semester it'll be top priority but you can get through it a lot of good time management skills will help you succeed in this course. Dr. Doherty is a great lecturer and Montana Dutton is very fun and she likes to keep lectures dynamic and interesting. All right, so next we're gonna talk about MedSurg 1, which is taught by Diane Robillard, at least when we went through the program. So with MedSurg 1, you're gonna have more clinicals than you had in Nursing Fundamentals. You're going to have six eight-hour clinical shifts, if I'm not mistaken. The subject material is very interesting. It's kind of the backbone of nursing. It's a lot more going into the disease processes deeper and t providing patient care, trach suction, wound changing, pressure ulcers, taking care of pressure ulcers, taking care of patients, putting in NG tubes up your nose. This is the fun s s class as far as your hard skills go. So starting IVs, doing IM injections, all the fun, sexy stuff that you imagine doing as a nurse, you're going to get to learn that in this class, especially during the skills labs, but even during the clinicals. As far as the exam difficulty goes, it's not insanely challenging, but you kind of do need to mind your P's and Q's and stay on top of your work. Taking notes in the PowerPoint is the way I did it, and that seemed to work out well. I hardly used the textbook, and it turned out fine for me. Um, yeah, MedSurge 2 is really uh, 
builds up on top of that. And so, but MedSurge 1 is really essential to becoming a good nurse and kind of get more in depth in the hospital and get to see what that's all about. The last class we're going to talk about for your junior spring semester is pharmacology. I can't speak too much to what you're going to experience in your class because the professor we had for the course is no longer employed by the university. But if the, your new professor uh, has a similar teaching style, you may have to do a lot of these EAQ assignments. They're through Evolve Elsevier, which is a publishing company. And basically, you'll just kind of turn and burn a bunch of questions on different drugs and stuff. It actually does help you learn the medications. A bit of advice with pharmacology, when you're learning about a drug, usually the last four letters will indicate what type of drug it is. Like for example, OLOL is a beta blocker, or peen, or let's say zine. Uh, drugs that end in zine are, those are psych meds, but don't worry about psych meds until your fall of your senior year. You'll get all the psych information you need that for that class. Um, but going back to this, so to wrap up your spring semester of your junior year of nursing school, I would say you're going to be a lot busier. You're going to have clinicals, you're going to have two pediatric clinicals, two OB clinicals, six med surge clinicals. On top of that, you're having to juggle exams for OB, peds, med surge, and pharmacology. So it definitely breaks you in. Like that first semester in the fall, you got fundamentals, which is very challenging, and you're having to juggle those classes, but this is going to be quite a challenging semester. In my opinion, I would say this is definitely the busiest semester. I'm not sure if it's the most challenging between this semester and the next one, which will be the fall of your senior year. It's kind of a toss up, they're both very challenging. But OB and PEDS is gonna be your most challenging course. I found myself putting pharmacology a bit on the back burner in my mind because I was so focused on thinking about med surge and thinking about OB and thinking about PEDS. And that's okay, um, you can do all right in this class. But I highly recommend having a calendar, something like this. I mean, look at all the days that are booked up because you're gonna need to stay accountable to yourself. I don't know how you've made it into nursing school if you don't have a calendar. Some people like them digital, some people like them paper. I'm old fashioned like that. But it's like every day of the week you've got something going on. You've got clinicals, clinical, clinical, simulation, and you really need to stay on top of it. Make sure that you're reading your syllabus to get all of the crucial dates that you need. But also don't forget to take time out of your day to be a college student you know, go out for margaritas with your clinical group after a long, hard day at clinical. Don't be afraid to socialize with your classmates, hang out, throw parties, do stuff like that. We were kind of deprived of that experience, and that is one regret that I think a lot of us had in nursing school, was getting to miss out on those bonding opportunities and make more friends. I will say, though, your clinical group is you better have some good clinical group classmates because you're going to be like this attached to the hip for your first three semesters of nursing school. Uh, so you better get along with each other. If y'all have any beef, you need to hash that out first semester. Um, you guys will have, I hope, a group chat and everything. And um, you got to help take care of each other. So, yeah, so you might be asking yourself, you've got a summer gap in between your junior year of nursing school and your senior year. You won't have any coursework to do, and if you, and you don't have any assignments. So I would recommend getting a job at a hospital. I worked as a tech at Augusta University Medical Center and got a lot of experience with patient care. You're kind of doing grunt work, but it's great because it, it kind of lets you know where you're coming from starting out, and it gives you an appreciation for your other coworkers in the medical field and how challenging their job can be compared to being a nurse sometimes. Another program that I would recommend looking into is the VA Valor program. It's a little bit competitive. They typically only have five slots. It's offered in Augusta, Georgia here at the Charlie Norwood VA. It's also offered at MUSC, I believe. Not MUSC, but the Charleston VA. 
it's a great program. So it's kind of like a practicum almost where you're assigned with a nurse and you just work a 12 hour shift with them and you can work up to 400 hours of 12 hour shifts and you get some great hands-on experience. I'm currently on a med surge floor at the VA downtown division of Charlie Norwood. It's great hands-on experience and the pay is very nice as well. It's, I'd imagine it's gonna be more competitive for your cohort to get into because more people are just gonna know about the program, but it's the VA Valor program. When I applied, there were 15 applicants and five slots available and it was kind of COVID times. So seats were kind of limited. If you can, I would get ICU or ER as your placement. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world. It is the VA and there are slow things and negative things about it, but that's with any job in the hospital. Uh, so if you do get that position with the VA Valor program, I would highly recommend, uh, don't expect them to get back to you quickly. We were supposed to start in May and we didn't start until July. So that's about two months of waiting. So I would get a job, make some money, have some fun, go to parties, and that's what I would do for the summer in between. Don't be studying for your psychiatric nursing class or anything like that. Have a little bit of fun because you've got three months of summer to enjoy. And do some working, work hard, play hard, and yeah.